Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. I'm a pharmacist by education with a passion for computational chemistry and today I wanted to talk to you about programming languages that are often useful in studying uh, chemoinformatics or otherwise known the computational chemistry field. So uh, first of all, let's answer the question why would you actually need programming skills in order to study computational chemistry. So computational chemistry is a special branch of chemistry that uses laws of physics to actually understand molecular level behavior. So although the roots of chemistry are experimental in nature, as in case of many other natural sciences, uh, the roots are obviously experimental, but uh, in recent years, in, with the advancement of computational power, we could make significant advancement in science. So as theoretical chemistry evolved with the advancement of computers, computational chemistry methods helped us make calculations with the help of the computers that would have been inconceivable even 50 years ago. So here I would like to actually make a disclaimer that you absolutely don't have to, it is not a must to know uh, computer science, programming languages in order to study, in order to start doing computational chemistry. Uh, it is often enough to understand fully the programs, the tools that you are using in the field. However, in this cutting edge science, um, Sometimes the tools that you are using start to hit a wall, start to hit the limitations of the method. So if you want to develop, uh, further develop the tools that are available, or you want to develop your own tools in order to study the specific field, then you actually need to uh, do programming or at least learn the basics of programming. So if that's the case, then I will tell you my personal opinion and a part of my journey. What I recommend is actually don't miss on learning Bash. So Bash is the language that runs in a terminal under the Linux operating system. And Bash scripting uh, is the idea of collecting all the comments into one file and then running all the comments in the terminal all at once. This trick is very useful for automation of pipelines and as Linux is usually installed on servers and we also established that computational chemistry is computationally heavy um, science field, you need sometimes powerful servers to run complex calculations and uh, bash really comes essential here. So at least you should know how to copy, move, rename, change directory. So these are the basic comments you should be very familiar if you are uh, running any jobs on servers. But beside the fact that it is highly used in the server backend, it is often very much used in the academic fields and often offers uh, great tools for file manipulation, automation, data wrangling, searching, manipulating files, uh, based on specific patterns using, for example, regex or grep or sed or awk is also very much useful. I really own my PhD to these tools. I could not recommend these enough. So these saved me honestly countless of hours and I generally made a script for everything that took me manual and repetitive work more than five times. I can't recommend it enough. So Bash is not the fanciest tool, it is not the language that everyone talks about. However, it can do for loops or if else's, while loops, even function definitions. So every basic feature that a programming language has to offer. And I'm still sure that uh, I haven't mentioned even 95% of its capabilities. Beside Bash, generally assuming that your main interest in computational chemistry 
industry is in processing data, statistical analysis, or modeling data, or data visualization. Another great tool is R. So R is targeted to do data visualization, and uh, it is very much used in bioinformatics and genomics, especially in the bioconductor project. So I have used R mainly because of the um, data visualization capabilities, but recently because of the developments in machine learning, there have been libraries developed especially for AI as well, so it is very handy for that as well. Another great programming language is Python. So Python is a great choice for a wide range of scientific applications from machine learning and typical cheminformatics tasks like chemical structural search, uh, virtual compound screening and molecular property prediction, just to name a few. So Python is a bit more like a clean programming language if we compare it to R. It is also modern and now nowadays very popular because uh, of the developments in AI. But beside this, it is generally recommended to be a good a beginner friendly language because it writes and uh, generally reads fairly easily. It is said to read similarly to English language. So in computational chemistry, there are several programs that are using Python. For example, Autodoc has Python scripts available that enable molecular transformation and molecular preparation uh, before the docking. PyMol is also a very popular molecular visualization tool that it is written in Python. Python just happens to be one of the easiest languages to learn as a beginner and has several numerical and science libraries that are very useful. So for example, RDKit, this is a collection of cheminformatics and uh, machine learning um, software written in C++ and Python. Uh, and also BioPython, which is often used for PDB file management and manipulation. If you are familiar in cheminformatics, you probably have heard about the PDB file. And this is a fixed file format and it is crucial to maintain uh, the format while file manipulation. And uh, BioPython generally uh, deals with this, which is very handy. Other programming languages that play a special role in modern scientific software development are the uh, high-level programming languages, such as C and C++. And these, are, these play a special role because of their speed. As I mentioned, uh, running molecular dynamics, simulation and computational chemistry in general, it is really uh, computationally expensive. Running microsecond simulations can take weeks and depending on the size of the system that you're studying, maybe even more that, than weeks. So having a program that can run many complex calculations really fast is uh, crucial. This is why most docking programs are also uh, written in C or C++. So beside learning the programming languages per se, I would also recommend learning LaTeX, especially if you are publishing in academia. Uh, it will help you also in your dissertation and the publication formatting. So uh, you can honestly do it without it, but in the academia it will definitely be very helpful. That is all for today. Let me know in the comment section if you have any suggestions or questions for other videos. And uh, give this video a like if it was useful to you.